Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. As most of you might know, my name is May and I'm a pre-med student at Brown University. I just finished the chemistry sequence at Brown. Going into college, these were definitely courses I was most anxious to take and not coincidentally the classes that take up the most time per week. But now that I've not only survived but thrived in these classes, I thought it would be helpful to share my insights on what to expect for these courses as well as my tips for course balance and how to prepare. Short obligatory disclaimer time, this is my experience and my experience only. Of course, other Brown students might disagree with my subjective ratings. As I said, I'm making this video to increase transparency and reduce some of the anxiety that builds up surrounding these notoriously difficult courses. So now we're just gonna get into the video. I ranked my most difficult classes I've taken in college so far. I will be telling you what to expect from these classes and the criteria I'll be using for my sort of arbitrary ranking system is the time spent per week on this class um, as well as in preparation for exams, the outside resources I had to utilize, as well as the type of class that is so memorization heavy or conceptually heavy. Okay so from least to most difficult, um, in last place of difficulty, we have calculus. I'm not really going to talk about calculus in this video because it definitely depends on your background knowledge. Having the AP credit for calculus, I could have taken multi, but the gap in sort of difficulty and knowledge requirement from normal calculus to multivariable was pretty steep, so I decided to just retake calculus for the requirement. So next up in terms of difficulty, we have Physiology and neuroscience sort of tied. Physiology counts as a bio requirement with lab. Neuroscience doesn't have lab, but it serves as sort of an elective for a lot of people. So what can you expect from this class? It was mainly memorization and not too conceptually heavy. It was really PowerPoint based and there was never a point where the memorization got too overwhelming. Overall, the course material was really interesting, although nitty gritty at times, but applicable to human physiology, which made the class a lot more enjoyable. I will say that neuroscience was very textbook heavy. The readings were extremely dense at times. In terms of what course you should take to balance out neuroscience or physiology, I took neuroscience with general chemistry and it worked out fine. Um, I took physiology with organic chemistry too. Both of those combinations turned out to be relatively manageable. Hours per week on each of these classes, I would say was about five to seven depending on if you actually do the readings or not. I would say I spent a good five to seven days studying for each of the exams with the two to three days prior being more heavy study days. Outside resources, I benefit a lot from using office hours and talking to the professors, but definitely didn't think it was super necessary. On to the overall rating, one being this is a walk in the park and 10 being, oh my God, I'm drowning in the ocean. I would give physio and neuroscience overall about a 5.8. Um, I could put on lecture capture in place of Netflix on a Friday night and not feel too bad about it. Now, moving on to the chemistry sequence. Let's all take a deep breath together. <sighs> and if you've made it to this point in the video while we're taking this break, um, leave a comment down below with the class that you're most and least excited to take next year. Now, in fourth place in difficulty, we have Organic Chemistry 1. What? Are you surprised? I think Orgo has this stereotype of being incredibly difficult because you have to memorize every single detail but I want to dispel that myth right now I personally thought that Orgo 1 was more conceptually based than uh, memorization if you just plainly memorize everything in organic chemistry that only gets you so far and you have to really understand concepts like nucleophilicity acid-based chemistry stuff like that so what can you start from this class if you enjoy problem solving and pattern recognition and then applying what you learn to those problems um, you might actually really enjoy organic chemistry. You learn pretty much 95% of the material from actually doing the problem, so I wouldn't worry too much about what the professor is saying. If you miss something, it's not a big deal. The most important part is to understand the mechanisms and to do the problems. In terms of balancing courses, I took Orgo 1 with Calculus and Public Health, and that ended up being okay. Hours per week, I spent probably five to seven hours per week doing the packets and going to problem sessions. Honestly, did not review lecture notes as much as I probably should have. Studying for exams, I would say a good week ahead uh, with a few days before being really intensive study days, like blocking out the entire day just to do organic chemistry. However, compared to memorization heavy classes, I would say that Orgo 1 actually wasn't that painful to study for. It was sort of enjoyable because you're doing problems. In terms of outside resources, TAs were helpful um, if you had specific questions. The online Q&A forum that we use, Piazza, was also really helpful for answering questions that you might have. But ultimately, the answer keys to the packets saved my life. At Brown, organic chemistry allows one flashcard during the exam, so you can put any notes that you want on that flashcard. My overall difficulty rating would probably be about a seven. 
Next up in difficulty is the class that I just took this past semester, biochemistry. God, this class is so much memorization. Um, the professors like to say that it's the class that's most similar to the coursework that we'll be having in medical school. I realized towards the end of this class that attending lecture is honestly kind of pointless. Like no one really absorbs information during lecture. Either you lecture capture it or just self-study from the slides. But if these options are not available to you at your school, if classes are not recorded, then use your own discretion in terms of whether you attend class or not. My tips are to recognize the major points that are high yield. You definitely don't have to memorize the extreme details of every single pathway. Um, if some biochemical pathway is glossed over in class, chances are, for example, you're not gonna have to know the enzyme names for every step. But on the other hand, if you're learning the citric acid cycle, that's a major concept and you would definitely want to know all the enzyme names, the intermediates, etc. At Brown, our exams were sourced a lot from the test banks that they gave us, so the highest yield way to prepare for the exam was to really focus on doing the test bank questions as well as going over the PowerPoints. For my recommendation for balancing course load with biochemistry is definitely do not take this class with another course that is extremely memorization heavy. It is just going to be an information overload and don't do that to yourself. Hours per week, I would say I spent a good probably five to six hours reviewing the lectures. For preparing for midterms, I start studying two weeks ahead. That sounds like a lot of time, but Realistically, the most efficient use of my time was probably just a week before the exam, but two weeks ahead, I would start reviewing some of the lectures. Keep in mind that my strategy when approaching midterm exams is to score the highest grade possible um, instead of just going for a safe zone grade so that I have more leeway to make mistakes on the final. The days leading up to biochemistry exams, I would literally spend the entire day just sitting there and studying for it. Just being real with you guys, it's not glamorous and you have to put in the work, but it's definitely correlated with your success and your grade. Outside resources, absolutely not. Just study the PowerPoints. You honestly don't even need to talk to professors or TAs if you don't want to. I will say that the Science Center tutoring at Brown is pretty helpful. Um, my tutor was really great in answering questions that I had. So biochemistry was probably the most memorization heavy class that I will be taking at Brown. There were very, very few parts that were conceptually challenging, but those lectures everyone struggled with to some degree. Overall rating, studying felt like a nine. Like I felt like I was drinking out of a water hose. Um, if you're pre-med, you might've heard that expression before, but the exams were honestly pretty easy. So to average those numbers, I'd give it like a 7.5. Okay, let's pick up the pace. Next one is Orgo 2. Orgo 2 was rough, but I weirdly kind of loved it. I've said this in a lot of my other videos, but the chem professors at Brown are incredible. They made me actually enjoy the courses. At Brown, Orgo 2 is like learning the quantity of information in the entirety of Orgo 1 in like the span of two weeks. Definitely expect to put in time to consistently review the material. I would say in each lecture, we learn probably like five to 10 mechanisms depending on the length. Okay, my major tip is just like in Orgo 1 to do the problem sets, but do them on a really strict schedule, don't get behind on them. You want to learn the mechanisms as you go and not cram them in all at the same time right before the exam, trust me, that will be a nightmare. But if you keep up with the mechanisms and do the packets every week, it's definitely a manageable class. To plan your course load while also taking Orgo 2, I would say definitely make sure to take a lighter course load. I knew I had to double up on pre-med requirements eventually, so I just decided to take Orgo 2 and Physiology together, and it was really challenging, but it turned out okay. I ended up doing really well in both of the classes. Hours spent per week, I would probably say six to seven-ish hours um, per week on a normal week. I probably start studying a week and a half before the midterms and I would trust the critical review in saying that it was upwards of 25 hours a week on exam weeks. Outside resources refer to Orgo 1 is pretty much the same type of class. Um, I would say Orgo 2 is actually a lot more memorization heavy than Orgo 1. So while in Orgo 1 you want to focus on learning the foundational concepts in organic chemistry, Orgo 2 is a lot more just rote memorization and applying the mechanisms you learned in class to problem solving um, and remembering how to recognize those patterns when you see them. Overall rating, I would give it a 8.5. 8.5 because it was difficult to keep up with, but ultimately the material was really rewarding and I actually really enjoyed the course. Um, would I ever take it again? Probably not, but it was a great class. Wow, we made it to the most difficult course and you might be surprised, but my most difficult class that I've taken at Brown so far is general chemistry. Are you surprised? No? Okay. <laughs> so this is a requirement that most pre-meds have to take in their first year of college. 
The adjustment to college courses can be really difficult. This was by far the course that I conceptually struggled with the most. I had to seek out a lot of outside resources, um, speaking to the professor after class, going to office hours. Even after dedicating a lot of time to the material, I still felt like I didn't understand a lot of the concepts completely. I will say though at Brown, general chemistry is really theory and conceptual based versus um, at some other colleges where it might be more similar to AP chemistry. So my recommendation for general chemistry is really to just seek help aggressively, especially because um, as an intro course that might be used to like weed out pre-meds, they might not have a lot of resources openly available. Um, for example, I don't know why, but in general chemistry, we didn't have TAs. We did have a group problem session, but it wasn't as helpful as having one-on-one -on -one help with TAs. So if you're a freshman and you've taken general chemistry and struggled with it, I just want to say that if you didn't do so great in general chemistry, you might do really well in Orgo 1, Orgo 2, or biochemistry because those classes are definitely structured a lot differently and are not as conceptually challenging. I honestly can't remember how many hours per week I spent on average in general chemistry, but I don't think I spent much more time on general chemistry than I did for other classes like Orgo or Orgo 2. In terms of type of class, this is definitely the most conceptual class that I've taken, um, which also makes it the most difficult for me. My overall rating would probably have to be a solid 9. Um, I did my best and a lot of the theory was still really frustrating and difficult. The time I spent in the class didn't necessarily correlate with my grade. However, please don't let this sound discouraging. I still got an A in the class and I think that ultimately seeking out help before you even know that you need it uh, and just keeping up with material and understanding it will definitely benefit you and you can do well in this class despite how challenging or theoretical it may be. And if you skip to this part of the video because you just want to know what the final rankings are, here they are. In seventh place, we have calculus. Tied for fifth place, we have physiology and neuroscience. In fourth place, we have organic chemistry one. In third place, we have biochemistry. In second place, we have organic chemistry two. And in first place, we have general chemistry. Ah! Despite being some of the most academically challenging classes I've ever taken, uh, these pre-med requirements have been really, really rewarding. I've not only taken away a great depth and vastness of knowledge, but I've also developed really great studying skills and problem solving techniques. Don't be afraid, I think a huge mistake that pre-meds make is going into classes with a really negative mindset, being like, oh my god, this class is going to end my academic career. Um, all of my expectations for these classes that are notoriously difficult were a lot more extreme than they actually were in reality. My major pro tip is to just stay away from hot spots of neurotic pre-meds. I avoided the basement of the science library at all costs because I know that everyone there would be studying for the exams that I was taking. So just do your own thing, be chill, take study breaks, watch my YouTube videos, but really try to make an effort to enjoy what you're learning and it will pay off. On that note, please let me know if you like to see more videos on how I study or any other pre-med related topics, leave any suggestions down below. Don't forget to drop a like, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs>